we're across lots of sectors. So Mplaster's commercial and commercial supply fit itself. We supply to Tom commercially. We do a lot of retail, we supply to Pete, and we have our own retail business. And we've got our own uh, commercial aluminium business, Acorn. But we closed all the operations. And after the government advice on construction, I think it came out at the end of March, Acorn, who deal with nine main contractors, blue chip main contractors, eight of them were on the phone the following morning. But it forced us to consider, work at that early stage, how we're going to continue to work under new restrictions. So that was the first thing for us to consider. Um, our Australian business never closed. The government was giving health guidance on how to you know, social distance, but also saying you must carry on work. No support came out from the government at that stage. So quickly we had to adapt them over there in terms of how are we going to sell and how are we going to install safely. So that, alongside the Acorn thing, got, I think, MPLAS thinking quite early that, look, we've got to adjust our methods now. We've quickly um, gone, a, you know, assessed our factory. We had deep cleans that we've all put in. I mean, I was at work on Monday and Wednesday as we start, restarted fabrication on Monday. We've put in line markings. We've got more posters than you could ever see before. We've got hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer stations all numbered and recorded. We must have about 20 across the offices and shed loads all over the shop floor. We've adjusted the canteen. We've adjusted shift timings. Um, everything that you can think of. We've got new safe systems of work. I think the advantage M plus has, not completely against the marketplace, but the advantage we certainly have at the minute is we've got Australia still selling and still in store. And I can, for example, we're making 250 Australia windows this week that I can do with 11 blokes on the shop floor that don't come within six meters of each other. So the machining center is six meters long, we load it, comes off the other end, it goes on the auto line, that's 10 meters long, and so on. But as far as selection is concerned, I think we've got, normally we've got 150 blokes on our shop floor. I've got 11 back. We needed guys who are cross-functional in terms of skill set. But if, you know, we, we're fortunate at the minute, and this is where the problem will come, we're fortunate at the minute that we've got a massive pool and we only need a few blokes. So we're not, we're not in a position at the minute saying, oh, you've got to come back or else. And, I, you know, I hope we won't ever get there. But I think our method, and we're fortunate with the Australia, I've got no transport because it goes onto containers and it goes to shipping lines this week. I think the only way to do it safely is to bring shop floor guys in small numbers, train them. They have training with us before they go onto the shop floor or they help a safety manager. They have a question and answer session. They go through all of that and we can do it in stages in line with demand, slowly, slowly. I think if someone thinks they're going to bring back half their shop floor in two weeks time or three weeks time, and just chuck 50 blokes into a melting pot, you, you just have complete and utter anarchy. Yeah, I mean, for us, um, it's, it's about, you know, um, we're waiting to see what the government's, um, you know, if they will lift any of the current restrictions in the next couple of weeks. When we've started to target, uh, the last couple of weeks, we've started looking at all risk assessments, we bought um, a lot of PPE because, you know, we recognise that, you know, this is going to be with us now for, uh, um, you know, the, the rest of the, the end of the year. Um, so it's going to be a considerable time. We've got to find a way of working now um, under new guidelines. We've just got to. We've got to protect our, our workforce. So the biggest challenge for us is going to be um, the, the public are going to want some, some um, reassurance from us as a business. You know, we're going to be coming back into their homes and we've got to show them that we've got procedures in place to, to do it as safely as possible. Um, we've got to come up with the safe systems of work. T and K have produced some. We're sharing them with our customers. The same document covers every process where there's customer potential customer interaction, so sales, survey, installation, and service. And uh, that will enable us to come back to work and to put a line in the sand. And I think that will then help us uh, close off deals from inquiries that we're still taking. Obviously our retail business, although it's smaller than our commercial business, is still vitally important. Now the lead flow from Facebook is daily. We are um, getting significant inquiries from um, Facebook. 
But I think what's really crucial to how do we generate leads as an industry and how do all these things connect? What's happening in our industry with IBGs and um, insurance in general? And how on earth can we stimulate a market and sell to people if we can't get any deposit insurance? Because customers are in that position of thinking, well, hang on a second, lots of these businesses may go bust. I don't want to spend any money with them unless I can protect that money. Um, so I've, I've taken the decision, again, we're lucky, we're, we're financially robust to do this, that all of our Facebook adverts at the moment carry a no deposit um, tagline to say, buy with confidence, you know, no deposit until the lockdown's finished. Now, it's great in principle, it's generating inquiries, but that's obviously from our point of view, a huge risk if it goes on for a long time. And I think all of those things are connected. There is definitely pent up demand. Um, Obviously, some of that's tire kicking. They're not all looking to buy right away, but we are getting sales. There is, there is, we are, we've got good equipment to do remote selling. Um, we're using that, um, and we are getting orders. At the moment, you've got a lot of people sitting in uh, retail company schedules, whose deposit insurance is just about to run out. So most IBGs last for a set period of days. I've got customers writing to me currently saying, my insurance runs out on the 23rd of May, <coughs> what happens afterwards? Now, originally the discussions that we had with the DGCOS were that you would be able to pay a small premium to extend it. Because of uh, the insurance and FCA rules governing insurance companies, who once they know a risk, have to mitigate any impact to them going uh, forward, you cannot now extend those IBGs. So effectively, you've got thousands of retail customers potentially with unprotected deposits. So how we get back to work and how we protect those people um, and what happens to all that money is key to the next question you want to ask. How do we protect the industry going forward and that's going to be really difficult when we don't even know how to start this process. How do we protect the money we've already taken? We've got, um, yeah, we've got a, an order bank to work through. So I don't see the issues. You know, it's more like, you know, if, if we, we pause the business overnight, so um, there's, you know, there's stock in our, in our depots. You know, so as soon as we come back, we've got everything scheduled in our, our diaries. You know, in the same order that the, the customers we postpone them so dropping all of our diaries back in you know we've got we've got two weeks of work to get through it's all sitting in the depot still at the moment uh, it's um you know once we get through that you know the and we've got an order bank as well uh, longer term you know i do think there'll be some you know the people are not going to be going on holidays this year you know there's there's not going to be any holidays to be had so you know i'm hopeful that i mean we've, we've seen a strong lead intake still through um, much like yourselves, we've seen you know uh, through the web. We've still seen reg a lot of people. You know, some of that will be tire kickers, but there's still a lot of interest out there at the moment. So, you know, I know our sales team are really keen to get back out there. And you know, look, we, we, we things are going to change, but you know, we're, I'm hopeful that um, you know it will still be we'll still see some a lot of um, a lot of interest out there. It's going to be very. Um, patchy. I think if we can get back to normal working, we'll be in a position where we'll eat through our um, current order book um, and sites will tick along. Um, and then, depending on whether the leads that we are currently generating increase in volume and we get an opportunity to get more sales and get them sold, um, I'm, I'm probably more optimistic about the longer term than I am the shorter term. I think we will adjust accordingly. You've got two choices. You can sit on your hands, bemoaning the fact of how hard it is, um, or you can bounce your ball a little bit harder. Um, I don't think, I know this is quite a harsh thing to say, I don't think it will do this industry any harm at all to lose some of the dross. I'd agree with Tom on that. I think in the next six months, you know, um, we've got an order bank to work through. We're going to see it being rather patchy. But once people get used to, you know, um, uh, this is the way we've got to work for the short term, 
you know, in the longer term, as government produce some stimulus back in and, um, you know, longer term, if there's some consolidation along the way, you know, the, the stronger companies and the, the good, strong brands, you know, longer term, I think will be there um, and it'll, it'll be good for us as, you know, as a company if, you, if you've got that strong brand. I think new build, there's, there's stuff in the system for new build. Retail, it will be the professional retail business that will adjust and you know keep marketing and keep looking forward it's going to be a bit a slow start and it's going to be a long process to get back to normal and i think it, we're just going to have to work closely with our customers and we're doing it now to try and get our retail business to see the light